सी आई ई टी एन सी ई आर टी प्रेजेंट नेशनल करिकुलम फ्रेमवर्क ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री पार्ट बी क्रॉस कटिंग थीम्स पेज नंबर वन हंड्रेड एंड एटी सेवन चैप्टर फाइव गाइडेंस एंड काउंसलिंग इन स्कूल्स वन ऑफ द की प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ गुड एजुकेशन ऑल्सो स्टेटेड क्लियरली इन एन ई पी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी इज दैट केयर इज सेंट्रल टू लर्निंग केयर इज डेमोन्स्ट्रेटेड बाय डिटेल्ड अटेंशन टू द कॉन्टेंट पैडोगोजी स्ट्रक्चर एंड प्रोसेस यूज इन टीचिंग एंड लर्निंग इट इज विजिबल इन द वे टीचर्स एंड स्टूडेंट्स इंटरैक्ट विद एंड अमंगस्ट ईच अदर द वे टास्क आर कंस्ट्रक्टेड एंड ऑर्गेनाइज द फिजिकल एक्सेसिबिलिटी ऑफ लर्निंग रिसोर्सेज द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऑफ द टाइम टेबल the distribution of responsibilities and the participation of students in a host of arrangements and actions that schools undertake for student learning in addition individual students or cohorts of students may have particular needs which the school may meet through a system of guidance and counseling provided by the school here a diagram is given wherein a school student is interacting with a counselor page number 188 section 5.1 defining guidance and counseling guidance can be broadly defined as the process of assisting individuals to enable themselves It is a supportive engagement that enables a person to find direction for making their own decisions and take actions all with the objective of moving towards personal well-being and useful social participation. Often it involves a trustful relationship where the person guiding is in some position of trustworthiness, seniority or authority or is deemed insightful or knowledgeable. counseling as a process involves an individual consulting another for advice much like the process of guidance it involves helping individuals understand and act upon their attitudes and decisions except that here this change seeking aspect takes a more central feature and often requires a skillful and well trained individual to engage and challenge individual patterns of belief and behavior in the school environment guidance and counseling can be seen as paired activities and not separate ones here it refers to the process of supporting the learning and maturation of students and not as a standalone or a separate part of the school curriculum it must be seen as complementary to the overall curriculum Another important point to note is that the school curriculum is almost wholly designed for student groups. The pointed focus of guidance and counseling is on an individual student's needs of learning, health and well-being. Having a system of guidance and counseling would also help teachers, parents and administrators meet the academic and psychosocial well-being needs of different students. Example, difficulties in learning career and higher education choices maturation related issues adolescence autonomy social cohesion and mental health and well-being section 5.2 approach to guidance and counseling in schools in schools guidance and counseling can be seen as supporting the attainment of educational aims it contributes to creating an ethos of overall well-being teaching individuals an ethic of care and mutual respect the scope of guidance and counseling support in schools may be seen as follows a health and well-being for members of the school community providing basic guidance and counseling to students parents and administrators in the context of the school community in the following areas 1 physical health and wellness This is one of the most crucial needs of growing up that requires careful addressing by schools designing programs that contribute to good health and physical fitness for all students across the stages of their school life is a central goal page number 189 2 psychological health and wellness 
With a primary focus on students, guidance and counselling work must teach strategies for emotional regulation and positive motivation, while mild to moderate challenges with mental health can receive counselling support within the school, it would be necessary to direct students and families to more qualified professionals outside the school system for clinical diagnosis and support. 3. Social Participation and Cohesion This would involve teaching strategies for healthy adherence to social norms, expectations and valuable social participation in the school. Schools would need to be equipped to meet the challenges of resistance, aggression, isolation and bullying. 4. Cognitive Health and Growth identifying students who are struggling to meet cognitive developmental milestones, advising their parents with supportive strategies and planning for additional teaching support. 5. Learning needs and diversity. Identifying challenges of attention and learning, attending to challenges that arise from any disability in students and creating individualised education plans, IEPs. B. Academic and Career Counselling Helping students make choices across stages of their school life whenever newer curricular areas are introduced and also helping with making decisions about academic and career choices after the secondary stage. C. Providing support for administrative and systemic improvements Individuals involved in guidance and counselling support must also be consulted while making decisions about the school's functioning, policies, programmes and activities. Enabling systemic improvements in schools such that these are cognizant of the diversity of learning needs and support required by all members of the school. Section 5.3 who can guide and counsel in school? In formal and informal ways, school teachers and school principals have long been naturally vested with the responsibility of guiding and counselling students and families. These members of the school community are best placed to do this because of their continuous contact and connection with students. Considering the ground realities of a vast majority of schools across the country, it is important and reasonable to acknowledge that school systems will have their limitations in addressing many challenges that come up concerning guidance and counselling. A successful plan for such support would require an understanding of what kinds of challenges teachers and principals can manage to address and the kinds of events or issues they cannot manage themselves, but must direct to professionals outside the ambit of the school. While teachers and principals will continue playing the role of guides and counsellors and should get basic capacity building in this regard, so that they have the required skills and capacities, a professional or specialist at the cluster or school complex level must be appointed as soon as possible, as suggested by NEP 2020, schools that have the resources and access to professionals can simply take the lead and follow what NEP 2020 suggests. Page number 190, section 5.4 Expected Outcomes of Quality Guidance and Counselling a good quality guidance and counselling support process in schools over time will ensure that the following outcomes are achieved. A. Students are physically and mentally healthy as individuals and comfortably practice positive learning habits. B. Students are retained in school and the number of school dropouts in all stages of schooling is lowered significantly. C. Students with diverse learning needs find equitable opportunities for support and growth. D. Individual students are able to make good subject, vocational and career choices based on the advice they receive during guidance and counselling. E. Teachers and parents are able to meaningfully communicate and support student learning. F. 
administrative policies and practices keep students' achievement of knowledge, capacities, and values and dispositions at the heart of all decision-making processes. G. The school environment is experienced as safe and all members of the school are protected. H. The school environment is seen as a space that allows for creative expression. I. The school year is well planned and designed with good quality learning processes that demand rigor and discipline in students. J. The school receives adequate support and respect from the local community. Guidance and counselling in school help students recognise and understand their own abilities, enhance their coping skills, promote better decision-making, improve their relationships and help them become self-directed in adapting to life and its challenges. You were just listening to the National Curriculum Framework 2023. This is brought to you by CIET and CERT. New Delhi, India.